I don't have to convince you guys, I love Bernie Sanders. Everyone who watches this channel knows I love Bernie Sanders. I mean, he has single-handedly transformed American politics for the better. He created a movement around progressive policies. I mean, we owe him a debt of gratitude for that forever because of what he managed to do. However, that being said, he is an imperfect person. He's not infallible, and as a human being, he's going to make mistakes from time to time, and lately, he's been making a lot of mistakes. And one in particular, um, it really has bothered me, and I didn't have time to talk about this last week on the program, but it's been weighing on my conscience, and um, over the weekend, this really bugged me. He missed a really key vote that I think was crucial, um, something that pertains to the Fourth Amendment, which has been a great concern to him. He's spoken out against the Patriot Act and, you know, warrantless surveillance on Americans. We needed him, and he wasn't there. And the worst part, I think, is that he's been silent. Like, we haven't gotten an explanation as to why he wasn't there for us. And, you know, as his supporters, I think it's especially incumbent on us to call him out because he knows... This is a good faith criticism. It comes from a place of love, not, you know, an opportunistic attempt to attack him and take him down as we see with the mainstream media. But um, before I go any deeper into uh, telling you how I feel about this, let's get to the story itself. As Slate's Jim Newell reports, the Senate on Thursday took up a key bill to reauthorize domestic surveillance programs while making changes to the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act with several substantial amendments on the line. One of the amendments introduced by Democratic Senator Ron Wyden and Republican Senator Steve Daines would have required authorities to obtain a warrant to access internet users' search histories and browsing information. Uh, yes, past that. The amendment, however, met an extremely Senate grave. It failed with 59 yeas to 37 nays, one short of the 60-vote threshold it needed to overcome the streamlined vestigial filibuster. The splits didn't fall neatly along partisan lines. 24 Republicans voted for it, while 10 Democrats voted against it. Would you like to see the names of the Democrats who voted against it? Their names are Tom Carper, Bob Casey, Dianne Feinstein, Maggie Hassan, Doug Jones, Tim Kaine, Joe Manchin, Gene Shaheen, Mark Warner, and Sheldon Whitehouse. Four senators, meanwhile, didn't vote when any one of them could theoretically have saved the amendment by showing up. Senator Lamar Alexander is self-quarantining in Tennessee after a staffer tested positive for COVID-19. We don't know where Nebraska Senator Ben Sass was and do not care. But where was Democratic Senator Patty Murray, ranking member of the HELP Committee and Assistant Democratic Leader, or Senator Bernie Sanders, an independent who caucuses with the Democrats and also constantly comes in second place for the Democrats' presidential nomination? Murray, a spokeswoman, told me after the vote, was flying back to D.C. from Washington State today. She isn't in quarantine. She's just been working remotely. An aide confirmed separately to Politico that Murray would have supported the Wyden Danes amendment had she been there. A Sanders spokesman has not responded to our request for comment about the senator's whereabouts. The Vermonter was last seen on Tuesday participating remotely in a help committee hearing from a room decorated with music-related campaign paraphernalia. He has not cast a vote since the Senate returned to session on May 4th. So the question is, where was he? I don't know. You let us down, Bernie, with this action, or inaction more specifically, and at a minimum, you owe us an explanation. People who have supported you, donated hundreds of dollars to your campaign, phone banked for you, canvassed for you, voted for you, caucused for you, you at least owe us an explanation. Maybe he has a good explanation. Or maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's just too focused on these task forces with Joe Biden, which I think is completely a waste of time and energy because that doesn't matter. That's not going to change anything at the end of the day. But his work as a United States senator, which is a very powerful position, actually will make a difference. So the fact that he didn't show up, I just, I don't know what to say. This, this bothered me. It's not like Bernie to do something like this. And no, he's not a sellout. No, he is not, you know, a bad person because of this. From time to time, people are going to let us down because at the end of the day, we're all human beings, including progressive leaders. But he's got to do better. Lately, Bernie just has not been making good choices and he's got to do better. This is unacceptable. And sure, you know, Patty Murray is as equally 
responsible for this as Bernie Sanders. But I mean, nobody expected the milk toast senator from Washington State to come through for us. But Bernie Sanders, it's really disappointing. You know, it's disheartening because if you're not going to be a leader when we need you the most, that's hurtful. That's going to leave a mark. And, you know, it doesn't give me any pleasure to criticize Bernie Sanders. And I feel like I've been dogpiling on him, you know, with everyone else lately, but I don't, I don't want to do that. I I don't want to give you the impression that, you know, um, he's useless to our movement and we don't need him anymore. No, that's wrong. I think he's, he's a crucial ally that we definitely need. But from time to time, as I stated, people who we trust and admire are going to make decisions that disappoint us. They're not always going to be there for us. And the last time I was this disappointed with Bernie Sanders was in 2014 when I saw a video of one of his town halls from Vermont where somebody had asked him about Israel's incursion into Gaza where they were basically um, indiscriminately killing Palestinian civilians and he gave a horrible response. He said, you know, Israel has a right to defend themselves and I found that appalling and uncharacteristic of Bernie Sanders. Now, he's improved on that issue but it just goes to show you that he's not perfect, right? He's not always going to be right He's not always going to be there for us. And at times when he's not there for us, at times when he lets us down in such a brazen way as this, uh, as he did here, we have to call him out. We can't give him a pass because he's Bernie Sanders. No, nobody's perfect. And everything that you did is great, but you're still a leader. You're still in a position of power and influence. And if you're not trying to make a difference, then we have to call you out. We have to tell you to refocus what you're doing and actually you know, pay attention to the things that matters. Like, we needed you on this. We needed you. And you let us down. And this hurts. It hurts really fucking bad. 